Hello, and welcome to our keynote today, Mac Lab Reimagined. Just before we begin, a little bit about myself. I am Scott Mackay, obviously, and I'm a systems engineer here at Jamf for UK and Ireland. I have worked within education and deploying Apple technology for over 10 years now, and I've been involved in some of the largest one-to-one -one Apple deployments in the UK and worldwide. So what are we going to cover today? Well, again, I know the topic Mac Labs can sometimes seem a bit technical, but don't worry, we're not going to go technical, technical on you. We are going to imagine that some people here may have never deployed a Mac before. And again, that's okay. We're going to cover all how we can do that and make that really simple with Jamf and Jamf Pro. So again, this can also benefit current customers. We do have a workflow and we will show you how to build this as well within Jamf Pro. So that again, if you want to take advantage of this, this is something that you can do with Jamf Pro today. We'll also look at how the Apple technologies, such as Arrays All Content and Settings and Auto Advanced through Apple School Manager can integrate with Jamf Pro to give you a seamless, seamless workflow. And we will touch a little bit about Jamf Connect as well and how that can benefit your users. So what are Mac Labs? And I imagine a lot of people will be you know, questioning why are we covering this? But if you think about it today, most education institutions don't come to Apple technology and deployment via Mac, it's very much iPads. So again, the first time a student or a teacher or a lecturer may get a bit of Apple kit in their hands, it isn't necessarily a Mac as it was 10, 15 years ago. Um, so I just want to quickly cover off what, what that is. Again, we've got the definition of a lab here and a Mac. Um, so again, a lab is a room, you know, equipped for experiments, research, or teaching. Okay, great. And what is a Mac? Apple defined as a powerful creativity and productivity tool. If we merge both those together, we get a room or a building equipped with Apple Macs to support learning and teaching. And it'll probably look something like this with a lot of Macs across a the desk. They might be spread outside uh, the outer ring of a room as well. Um, various different ways people design these, but it will look very much like this with a lot of Apple logos everywhere. With Mac Labs though, come a lot of challenges. And I'm sure this is where the uh, experienced Mac admin will be nodding their head right now um, and saying, yep. And they'll probably agreeing that they either have one or all of these challenges. Um, so we'll just break them down. And the most common one being is that there's multiple users on a single machine. Again, this can cause issues with saving data and finding it again. Apple, you know, discontinuing and recommending moving away from network home folders. There's issues with binding these days and such like that. So again, that caused a lot of issues alone on itself with the multiple users. But not only that, it's, it's how they are used. So again, they are, tend to be used for very um, media and creative subjects. So again, think about your music, your film, any design, things like that. So that tends to bring big applications with it. So think about your Adobe Photoshop, your Final Cut Pro, your Logic Pro, Pro Tools, all these big, big um, applications. So the applications themselves maybe aren't that big, but it's the add-ons, the libraries that come with them that can you know, go into the two, 300 gigabytes, depending on how much you deploy of it, um, which can you know, drastically, again, take up a lot of space on that machine. And then once the users are using these applications, it can also tend to create some large files as well on there. So again, you know, you've got our library of applications, but then we've also got the documents that come with that as well. Once your users created it over a semester or an academic year, that can build up to be quite, quite a fair amount. The other problem is, is when we do get to those end of semesters or academic years, we've then got a really short time frame to go in and do a lot of work on these machines as well. So again, some of the most common things that we've got to do is update applications. Um, so again, you know, is there a new version of Photoshop maybe, or Logic Cut Pro, Final Cut Pro, or Logic Pro Tools? Again, updating all these applications that may be required and getting it ready to deploy again and make sure it works. The other thing we've got is testing. And that could be in various forms. That could be testing a new operating system that Apple have released, testing a new application, um, but it can also be testing new hardware and how that integrates. Think, you know, printers, Maybe you've got new networks coming in. There's all this um, as well that we've got to test in that short period of time. While it doesn't drastically affect the day-to-day -day use of the machine, it could impact you know, a learning or teaching environment very quickly. 
And then we may also have redeployment. So we may be moving Max to a different room. So maybe they were in you know, a music recording studio, but they're now going to a drama studio, for example. So they need to be set up in a different way. And it could be that the machine is now end of life and we're you know, taking it out and bringing in a new one. And these all cause challenges as well. Um, and time that again, we've got a very short window at the end of an academic year or end of a semester to cover that off. So how can Jamf help with all these kind of things, large applications, multiple users, the redeployment, the testing. Well, we've got a lot of different areas that we can cover on that, um, but we'll go through a workflow. Um, and really, I know a lot of you will be sitting going, yeah, that's great, but we don't unbox new, new Macs onto our desk every year. So our Macs are already set up and that's okay. Because again, um, with macOS Monterey, we now have a new Erase All Content and Settings feature, which we'll show you working later on. Um, and show you how you can take advantage of that specifically in Mac Labs and how that can help you. We can also integrate with Apple School Manager. And again, that allows you to really simplify the deployment process of that. It brings us features such as automated device enrollment and auto advance. So again, meaning that again, we just need to plug the Mac in. If it's already plugged in, great. We can automatically set it up for you with Jamf Pro. And on top of that, we can then deploy Jamf Connect. So again, the user could just walk up to the machine. It's a customized login window. And the user just has to enter their cloud identity provider credentials. So this might be Microsoft Azure or Google, as we most commonly see in education. So I know that's a lot, but we're now going to go break it down um, and speak about each individual feature. And we'll show you it all working uh, side by side at the end. So just again, well, there'll be relatively new people coming to this and they've never heard of Apple School Manager. So we will break this down for you and, and kind of highlight the benefits of it. Apple break Apple School Manager down into three different areas. We've got devices, people, and content. So the most key one for this kind of topic today is devices. And what this allows us to do, if you buy your hardware through an Apple authorized reseller, they can enroll it into your Apple School Manager instance, which is just an online web portal meaning that when the user turns the machine on, it automatically gets passed to MDM, like Jamf Pro, and will automatically enroll into Jamf Pro, meaning your devices are safe and secure no matter who enables them. They also have two other areas, people, which allows you to create managed Apple IDs. So that again, in education, you can utilize up to 200 gigabytes of iCloud storage space and content where you can purchase applications and books to deploy to your devices. We won't be looking at people in content today, we'll be focusing on the device bit, but it's very much worth noting how advantageous these can be within education. And if we do integrate Apple School Manager and Jamf Pro together, we can utilize that feature that I spoke about, automated device enrollment. Now, I won't read this whole statement out to you, but I think there's a lot of key words here that you can see in bold that speak to a lot of people automation, simplify setup without touching, and it gives you ongoing management. Again, this is key issues that people always come to us and ask, how, how can we do these features? What do we do? And this is all under the power of Apple School Manager and Jamf Pro utilizing automated device enrollment. And we will show you that a little bit later on. And a relatively new feature that actually started with tvOS and Apple TV is auto advance. And what this allows you to do is without any additional user interaction, as long as the machine is plugged into Ethernet, the machine can automatically set itself up from the setup assistant. And again, that drastically saves time. But not only that, when we start to add arrays all content and settings in, we can erase a machine and get it to automatically self set itself up without anyone touching the machine, which we'll come on to. And finally, we have Jamf Connect. Again, this makes it really easy to provision account on machine because we can utilize single source for the user, just utilizing their cloud identity provider credentials such as Azure or Google. Again, because we're using that, we can secure the machines through current password policy that you may have there, which is again, great, but we can also support multi-factor authentication at the window, at the login window as well. So again, for any maybe university, Mac Labs, that can become a really big benefit if you're trying to utilize things like cyber essentials or worried about GDPR. And finally, it allows us to keep passwords in sync. So if the user changes their password or wants to change it on the Mac, we can support that and change it on the IDP side as well. Again, meaning that no more logouts on the Mac.
So what are the requirements to achieve all of this? Well, of course, we need Apple School Manager to enable us with automated device enrollment. We also need Jamf Pro, that goes without saying. We do need your Mac OS device plugged into Ethernet, only for the setup though, only for the setup. Apple do only support T2 or newer machines with the auto advanced feature. So that's just worth noting and the erase all content and settings feature, it requires T2 or newer. And we also require Jamf Connect if we want to utilize the IDP at the login window. So let's see what this all looks like when we bring it all together. So first of all, we need to erase our machine. I'm gonna call this out here because anyone who has worked in Jamf Pro before has probably seen this button that says wipe computer that we've got highlighted here. We've got a number of different M MDM management commands that we can push to a computer and wipe computer has always been there. But this command now works slightly differently. So you, if you have a T2 machine or newer, it will erase all content and settings. Just like if you had an iPhone and went to settings general, erase all content and settings, and it erases it back to factory settings like you took out the box again, this is exactly what now happens on macOS. So there's no need to push down macOS installers and scripts and things like that to erase a machine. We've got a single one touch button within Jamf Pro to do that. So again, this button has always been in Jamf Pro, but it now works slightly differently on T2 machines or newer. If we bring that all together, this is what it looks like. So I have my Mac here set up and I've pushed the wipe computer command. What this will actually do is it will erase all content settings, as you can see here. We've had no user interaction on the machine as well. What it will do is it will put you into a recovery, recovery assistant partition on the Mac. But because I've got my Mac plugged into ethernet, I don't need to be at the machine to click any buttons because it will automatically detect that. And you can see here it's now counting down. So again, it can count down or I can manually click restart. Um, for quickness, I will manually cl click restart so we don't need to sit and watch that. And the machine will then boot back into factory settings. And here we are. We are now at the Mac OS setup screen. And as you can see, my mouse is in the top left hand corner, but the machine is continuing to automatically go through all this information itself. So now it's reached out to Apple School Manager and Apple School Manager has told it, you belong in this Jamf Pro instance and it's automatically enrolling it for us without any user interaction at all. Again, it's applying all my policies and configuration profiles and applications to the machine. And now we're at the login window. And this allows us, now we've got Jamf Connect here, to log in here. I'm utilizing my Azure credentials. I have a customized background, so it looks really nice. And what's really nice again is, like I say, we can support MFA at the login window. So here it is logging up. And again, because it's the first time users signed into the account, we can actually help get them to set up MFA if we require. It's not, so that's okay. We're gonna skip that bit. But we could also push down things like acceptable use policies as well. This is just a small PDF I created and pushed down to the machine. So again, when the user ticks that I agree button and continues, we actually log that for you. So we can log that to a document um, on the machine. So again, if ever you need to do some investigation work or you know you just want to track it, who's agreed to that, we track the username and the time they click agree to that. And again, these are all optional features with Jamf Connect. So why do this? Well, it allows us to return those devices to service faster. So again, there's nothing worse than on a Friday, you know, somebody calling you up and saying, we've got an issue with this Mac. If we can send an erase all content and settings command to that machine or the wipe computer as it's called in Jamf Pro, and it does that, our Mac is back up and running within minutes. And again, benefit, you don't need to be in front of the machine to do that. Again, send the command via Jamf Pro and it will do the rest for you. And ultimately that saves us time time spent setting up new machines, time spent setting up legacy machines. Again, this works on T2 or newer machines, so that covers the last four or five years. Um, so again, you probably have quite a lot of these. Or again, really think about investing in those new machines and actually the total cost of ownership that you will save in the time spent managing them. So again, I know a lot of people are, you know, traditional Mac admins, um, 
we used to have something called imaging. Um, again, you can bit from a server or you could bit from a hard drive and copy across all these things. This is very similar, right? So don't be afraid to enable this. And this is something that we've been asking for for a long time. How could you help us as Mac admins really make deploying Mac and education establishments easier? And again, you can do this with MacBooks too, right? Again, plug the MacBook into Ethernet for the setup, power it on. Once it's at login window, you can unplug that Ethernet again. Lots of key benefits to doing this, and it will save your users and yourself time. So thank you for listening. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at the contact page, um, and we will be happy to answer them. I hope you've enjoyed this keynote and that you've learned something useful today. We look forward to seeing you soon.